The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means... God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. All throughout Advent, Our Advent devotions have been focused on the prophet Isaiah. And we've been reading some pretty amazing words about Isaiah and what this prophet is speaking to the people. And today is especially important because Isaiah prophesies about a child that's coming that will be called Emmanuel, who will save the people. But why would Isaiah need to say this to the people? At this point in time, Isaiah is living in Jerusalem, and the people that are there are being attacked by Israel, attacked by Syria, and they're really concerned that their city is going to be sacked, that it's going to fall, that all will be lost, and they're without hope. And the prophet speaks out, saying, not only is God with us right now, but God promises to be with us, that this woman will have a child, and when that child is old enough, will save the people. His name will be Emmanuel, and all the military threats will be over. Isaiah, speaking a word of promise, a word of hope, a word of prophecy to the people when they're in disbelief. Now you fast forward to the disciples and Jesus walking around and Jesus preaching and teaching and healing and all this stuff. It's no wonder that the people then wanted a Messiah. They were expecting, excuse me, they were expecting a Messiah that was going to come and conquer the military and take over and create peace and get rid of all of the, the struggles and the strife and the, and, the, and the chaos that they were dealing with because they thought that a military threat was going to end with this Emmanuel. But that's not what really happens. They're confused because all of a sudden it's Jesus, this man who's bringing peace, this man that's fulfilling the scriptures but in a unusual, unexpected way. They don't understand. Time and time again, the disciples are confused and baffled by what Jesus is doing and saying. John the Baptist in prison last week was so confused about what's going on, he sends his own disciples to go check and they come up and they're saying, Jesus, are you really the one? Really? This is what it's all about? They were expecting like a general to come in and just sweep it all out and go back to the time of David and it's going to be wonderful. That's not what happened. They didn't understand what Jesus was doing. But there was one man that did. One man got it. One righteous man knew that Jesus was doing something very special. And his name was Joseph. And we read about Joseph in our gospel lesson today from Matthew. Before we jump into that, let's just have a little conversation about the Gospel of Matthew and the birth narrative of Jesus. On Christmas Eve, we always hear the story of the birth of Jesus, don't we? And it's from Luke. And we all love this one from Luke because it's Mary treasuring things in her heart and the shepherds are in the field and the angels are singing and and it's so beautiful and and poetic and, and wonderful. And we hear that every single year. What we don't get is the birth story from Matthew. In fact, the only time we hear the birth story from Matthew is on the fourth Sunday of Advent every three years today. And we'll do this again in three years, so keep coming back, all right? So this this birth narrative of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew is pretty important because Matthew is quoting Isaiah. He's telling him that this is Emmanuel, that this is God with us. 
Isaiah is being, Matthew is pointing back to Isaiah that this child is, the, is, is God on earth, that God is with us, the fulfillment of Scripture. And it's so important to the gospel writer of Matthew that the very last line in the gospel of Matthew says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God with us. Not only in the birth, but even at the very end, Jesus reminds, I am. And with you. This seems to be very important for the gospel writer of Matthew, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah and then some. So, this gospel does not have the shepherds. This gospel does not have Mary treasuring everything in their hearts. This is the one that has them fleeing to Egypt and it has the, the Magi coming to visit him later on. And while Luke is from the perspective of Mary, this is from the perspective of Joseph. And it's really, really wonderful. And if you look in your Bibles, you'll see in verses 18 and 19, we see a whole lot about Joseph in this. The, one of the key words that they tell us is Joseph was a righteous man. Righteous is a pretty loaded word. It means being right with God. Joseph followed the laws of the Torah. Joseph did what was being asked of him as a righteous, devoted follower of Yahweh but he was more, not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And you can tell this because his bride-to-be, this woman he's engaged to, comes to him and says, I'm pregnant. It's from the Holy Spirit. And the letter of the law would basically say, Joseph, you can dismiss her and she will be stoned and put to death and you can go on about your life. But that's not what he does, does he? He's in the middle of the engagement period. He's still trying to wrestle up enough money to give to Mary's father so she can become his wife. This is a huge hindrance, but he doesn't. In fact, it tells us in verse 19 that he plans to uh, uh, dismiss her quietly. So she won't even experience any public, uh, um, um, what does it say, uh, uh, public disgrace. So here is Joseph, this righteous man, unwilling to send his wife off and his and this baby off to die, plans to dismiss her quietly so she won't even be publicly disgraced. He believes that she's with child. He believes that it's from the Holy Spirit. And then, after all of that's happened, then an angel appears to Joseph in a dream. Angels are interesting in the Bible. They're not like our cherubs that we see on Hallmark gift cards and stuff. They're, they're not the, the cutesy little precious memories, precious moments, angels and stuff with the chubby little cheeks and the little you know, uh, uh, wings and halos and stuff. Angels were the divine messengers of God. They were an extension of God's power and mercy. They were the messengers. And all throughout scripture, this is how believers came to know the divine came to know the Almighty was through the angels. And when an angel spoke to you, it was usually overwhelming and overpowering, and you were filled with fear and with awe. But Joseph responds immediately with faith and does exactly what that angel tells him to do. He listens. This righteous man has experienced the divine, and he knew what he was called to do. And he can see how his bride, is the manifestation of the prophet's words, how this child is the one that was spoken about to come and to save the people, that he is Emmanuel, he is God with us, that he will rescue the people, he will preserve them, this baby, this Jesus will save them all. So this righteous man takes Mary as his wife. This righteous man raises this baby as his own because he is. Last week, Pastor Heather gave a great sermon about expectations. If you haven't seen it, it's on, it's on YouTube. Check it out. But uh, uh, she talked about all the ways that you know, we expect one thing to happen and it's something else. This is all the time throughout Scripture. They were expecting Jesus to come with this powerful warrior. That's not the way he came. Jesus didn't come into the world as the world expected him to, at the time that the world expected him to, to the family that the world expected him to, and as that powerful warrior that the world expected him to. Jesus came as a baby to an unwed teenage mother who was loved and cared and, and, and devoted to her husband, to her spouse. This is the family dynamic that God chose to come into the world through. One that is willing to save the other person at any cost. Wow. 
we're a part of that family. Today we're invited to be like Mary, that God is with us, God is in us, God is within us, to share with the world. Today we're invited to be like Joseph, receiving this gift from God that we could never have achieved on our own, and share it with the world, and to cherish and to hold this Emmanuel, this God with us, this baby, this fulfillment of scripture, this promise to be with us to the end of the age. Today, we are the Holy Family, and God is with us. Emmanuel. Amen.